everyone, my name is Jasmine Medel Sedanio from BSN 111B. And today I will be performing a return demonstration of the cardiovascular system assessment. A cardiovascular assessment will help to identify significant factors that can influence the cardiovascular health such as high blood cholesterol, uh, cigarette use, diabetes, or hypertension. So therefore, a cardiovascular exam should be a part of every Abbrevi abbreviated and complete assessment. So prior to the performing of the procedure, I have already reviewed the client's medical record and checked the doctor's order for the need to perform the assessment. This is to, uh, to, to conserve time and energy. I have also prepared the necessary equipments and determined the scope of the assessment needed. So the equipments that I will be using for today are the following. Pen light. A stethoscope and a two long um, objects or two centimeter rulers. So after I have prepared the equipments, I have performed hand washing and observed appropriate infection prevention. This is to protect the client as well as myself from the spread of microorganisms and other illnesses that they may cause. Good day, sir. I am Jasmine Medel Sedanio, your student nurse for today. May I see your response, please? Huh? Can you please state your name and birthday? Hi, I'm Ray James Lin, and my birthday is August 29. Okay, so thank you. And how would you like me to call you, sir? Rio. Okay, nice to meet you, sir Rio. So today I will be um, assessing for your cardiovascular system, which means that I will be checking the pulse on your neck, arms, and legs. And I will be also listening to your heart sounds. Is that okay with you, Rio? Yes. Okay, so do you have any questions, clarifications, or concerns? No. Okay, so if you have one, feel free to ask me anything, okay? Okay. Okay, so are you comfortable right now? Yes. How about the temperature of the room? Are you yes. okay? Or do you feel any pain? No. Okay, so that's great. So if you don't have any questions or concerns, we will now proceed. So. I have already closed the curtains and doors to, the, to ensure the comfort and um, ensure the privacy and confidentiality of my patient. So sir, we will now start with a short interview. Okay sir, so do you feel any pain? No. Um, do you have a um, history of any cardiovascular problems? Like hypertension, diabetes? No. No? Okay. And how about your family? Uh, do they have any history of hypertension, diabetes, or any other cardiovascular problems? I don't know. Okay, so you don't know? So do you smoke cereal? No. Okay, and what are your usual activities? Biking. Okay, biking. So I see that you like to exercise. Okay, so that's great. So thank you, sir. So I will now first assess for the jugular veins and carotid arteries. So first thing to do is to um, position the client on a supine position with the head of the bed elevated between 30 to 40 degrees, making sure that the head and torso are in a same plane. And this position relaxes the neck, the neck vessels, allowing better visualization and access to the precardium. So, then I will ask the patient to turn his head slightly to the left and shine a tangential light source onto the neck, supersternal notch, and the area around the clavicles to observe the pulsations and shadows. Sir, can you please look at the left? So if jugular distension was noted, assess the jugular, jugular venous pressure by locating the highest visible point of distension of the internal jugular vein and as deemed necessary, raise, a, raise or lower the head of the bed until the highest visible point of the distension of internal jugular vein was observed. So next is to measure the vertical uh, distance in centimeters above the sternal angle by extending a long card 
horizontally from this point and a, and a centimeter ruler or other vertical um, or other long object vertically from the sternal angle making an exact right angle. So proceeding now to the assessment of the carotid artery with the head of the bed still lightly elevated at 30 degrees. So position the client's head slightly towards the side being examined. And palpate the carotid artery cautiously avoiding too much pressure or massaging the area because it might obstruct the blood flow and also do not palpate the both carotid arteries simultaneously as pressure on the baroreceptors of the carotid sinuses may precipitate reflex bradycardia. So I will now place the bell of my stethoscope over the carotid artery and listen for a brewery. And if a brewery was heard, then gently palpate the artery to determine the presence of a thrill. Okay, sir, can you please hold your breath for a moment? Okay. Can you please hold your breath for a moment? Okay, thank you. So, sir, I will now inspect your chest area. So I will now proceed to the assessment of the heart. I will begin with the um, general inspection of the chest fall. Okay, so I am looking for any abnormal pulsations, symmetry of movements, scars, or lesions, which I don't see. So I will use my pen light to shine a tangential light across um, the chest wall over the cardiac apex to make the movement more visible. Okay. So next, um, simultaneously inspect the precardium for um, pulsations while palpating the aortic, pulmonic, hercospid, and apical area. So first, um, palpate for heaves and lifts using the palm flatly against the chest. So for thrills, um, press the ball of the hand firmly on the chest to check for a buzzing or vibratory sensation caused by underlying turbulent flow. Okay. So then palpate impulses using finger pads flatly or obliquely on the body surface from the aortic, pulmonic, and tricuspid area. Okay, so now palpate the apical impulse using the palmar surface of two or two to three middle fingers. Okay, so then the, uh, for final assessment, palpate with one finger only to, per to confirm the characteristics of the apical impulse. So if unable to palpate the apical impulse with the patient's supine 
with the patient supine, so we position the patient to roll onto the left lateral side. And if still unable to palpate, then ask the patient to exhale fully and stop breathing for a few seconds. Sir, can you please look at the left side? Okay, so sir, can you please sit down? Can you please sit forward? Okay, so can you please hold your breath for a second? I will now inspect and palpate the epigastric area. So next is to assess the heart rate and rhythm by placing the um, diaphragm of the test scope and the, at the apex and listen closely to the rate and rhythm of the apical impulse. So, um, the, dia the diaphragm of the, of the stethoscope is best for higher pitch sounds like um, heart rates or breath sounds while the, bell, while the bell is best for detecting lower pitch sounds like um, heart murmurs. So if irregular rhythm was detected, then assess for a pulse rate deficit. So again, using the diaphragm of the stethoscope first, then the bell, um, auscultate the heart in all four anatomical sites, which are the aortic, pulmonic, tricuspid, and the apical or mitral areas. Sir, can you please um, look at the left side? Okay, so sir, can you please um, sit down? Okay. okay, so sir, we will now proceed to our last assessment for your um, peripheral vascular system. So, um, are you still comfortable right now? No. Okay, so do you have any concerns? No. Okay, so okay, so that's great. So I will now start. So for the assessment of the peripheral vascular system, I will first um, examine the upper extremities. So first thing to do is to assess each arm for 
um, size, symmetry, skin color, and temperature for uh, from fingertips to shoulder. Well, sir, can you please have your arms? Okay. So skin is evenly distributed. So I am looking for if there are any presence of edema lesions, the changes in skin and hair distribution. So your hair distribution is evenly even. Okay, so I will not check your temperature. So your um, your skin is warm to touch. So I will now palpate for the um gel um ulnar and very helpful individually and bilaterally. So starting with the radial. are strong can be closed and for the okay so we'll now assess for the capillary repeal So now I will perform the Allen's test. Yes, sir. Can you please um, make a fist? Okay. Then release. Okay, again, fist. Release. Okay, the other side. Can you make a fist? Now done with the upper extremities, I will now proceed to the lower extremities. Okay, so I am looking for symmetry, size, and if there are any presence of edema lesions, which I don't see. Okay, so I will now palpate for the temperature. I will now palpate for the um, popliteal dorsalis pedis and um, posterior, tibia, for posterior tibli, tib, tibialis individually and bilaterally for the po, uh, popliteal. For the other salis pedis. Okay. And for the posterior tibias. Okay. So I will next assess for the capillary repeal. For both legs. Okay, 
So next, I will inspect for ulceration, um, swelling or redness, and varicosities. Okay, so I will next palpate for the firmness or tensions of of her muscle, uh, his muscles. Okay, so I will now perform the Holman's test. Um, it is used to test the deep vein, deep vein um, thrombosis or the DVT. Okay, sir, so we are done with the cardiovascular assessment. So um, let me just sum up everything that we have covered upon us uh, inspecting palpation and and auscultation. So um, starting with your neck, I have not heard any swishing, sw swishing sound or um, blowing sound. So your pulse is strong, rated 2 plus, which means normal. So no thrills noted and your jugular venous pressure is at 16 six centimeters of water with pad elevated six thirty degrees which is good and normal so next upon assessment of your chest or heart um your chest movement is symmetrical no retraction no heaves and no thrills and for the and the vibrations or pulsations are palpated in the areas of the apex uh, apex left sternal border or wrist so your heart rate is um, 80 beats per minute with a regular rhythm. Next, upon assessment, uh, upon assessing for of your upper and lower extremities are bilaterally symmetrical with minimal variation in size and shape. No edema, prominent venous pattern, and your skin is warm to touch and your capillary feel is good. And for your ra uh, radial ul ulnar, brachial pulses are um, bilaterally strong has a regular rhythm which indicates good or normal findings. So upon performing all this test, the result is good. And to your lower extremities, your leg hair is evenly distributed. And the skin is also warm to touch, not with edema, lesions, and swellings. Uh, your, popliteal, your popliteal, their solid pedis, and posterior tibial, posterior tibial pulses are all normal and equally strong and it has um irregular rhythm so that's all um overall there is no indications or signs of abnormalities and also continue having healthy lifestyle practice um continue practicing regular exercises as much as possible for you to be healthier so thank you very much for your cooperation sir rest assured that all of the information that we have um, gathered are secured by only me and the um, physician in charge will be the, will be able to um, see this result. So goodbye and th and have a nice day.